praise him, Lord of all. He is the Lord of lords, the King of kings, the God of gods, the only God. And we come to worship him tonight and to look into his word and uh, to grow closer to him as a result of our experience tonight. In your hymn book, if you would, turn to hymn number 190. 190. And uh, we'll sing and we'll stand and sing all four verses. <clears throat> there is never a day so dreary, there is never a night so long, but the soul that is trusting Jesus will somewhere find a song. Wonderful, wonderful Jesus, in the heart he implanted the song, a song of deliverance, of good. of joy, of, of peace that only you can give. And so, Father, we come to you tonight on behalf of the service and ask that you would be with each one of us, Father. Open our understanding to your word that you have for us through Pastor and then speak through Pastor the, 
words with power and authority and understanding that we need to hear tonight and help us to apply them to our lives that we would have a closer and a better walk with you as a result. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated and stay right in the same place in your uh, hymn book right across the page 191. In my heart there rings a melody and I certainly hope that's true of everyone tonight that they have a melody in their heart. I have a song that Jesus gave me It was sent from heaven above There never was a sweeter melody Tis the melody of love In my heart there rings a melody There rings a melody harmony. In my heart there rings a melody, there rings a melody of love. I love the Christ who died on Calvary, for he washed my sins away. He put within my heart a melody, and I know it's there. In my heart there rings a melody, there rings a melody of love. Twill be my endless theme in glory, with the angels I will sing. Twill be a song with glorious harmony from the courts of heaven. In my heart there rings a melody, there rings a melody of love. All right, Pastor. Amen. I think of what the word says, be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, singing to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. And we begin to praise the Lord, it'll do a lot for us emotionally and spiritually. Um, praising the Lord is a step of obedience, but it's good for you, friends. So good singing tonight, glad you're here. Welcome back, hope you're having a good week so far. And if you're joining us midweek uh, through live stream, thank you for joining us through either Facebook or YouTube, those are the two channels where we're at. And uh, we thank the Lord for that technology. And up to this point, it's, you know, it's open. Praise God for that. And um, we're able to use it. A couple of announcements uh, about this weekend. We are having men's prayer breakfast Saturday morning, 830. And gentlemen, you're welcome to come. I do ask that if you're coming, please sign up. There's a sign-up sheet back at the information desk in the corner. And that would help us out uh, just planning for the meal. 830 a.m., men's prayer breakfast. Sign up for that if you are coming. And uh, then ladies' Bible study at 9.30, um, and uh, there's not a sign-up sheet for that, uh, but you're welcome to come, ladies. And then door-to-door soul winning at 10. Um, pray for me. I have a funeral. Um, I'll be preaching over in Wachula, so right after prayer uh, group is over, uh, prayer breakfast, I have to leave, um, so be in prayer for me if you would. One of my former church members, Mary Thompson, went to be with the Lord. I got to baptize her back when I was pastoring over at Maranatha. And uh, she started coming to the church while I was there, watched my kids when they were little babies in the nursery. And in fact, we talked about that last time I saw her in the hospital. She said, I still remember your son, Jeremiah. And um, I was hoping to bring him with me, but I didn't get a chance. And now she's in heaven. So I'll see her again. And uh, just pray for that service, though. 
I will say this, if you're coming to men's prayer breakfast or ladies' Bible study, we're going to be having some work done on the property up on the hill, but it's going to be just at this end of the parking lot. So if you come in on Saturday, park over against the building or away from the tree line, away from that, because we got to get it smoothed out for wild horse ministry, and there will be a tractor and a truck here, and he'll be moving dirt around just so, you, you know, um, if you can move down towards that end or even park over here if you're able, that would be good. If you're not able to park over here, then by all means park over there, um, but just stay away from the tree line back on that corner. And then Sunday, we're looking forward to regular services in the morning. Uh, Brother Halstead will be starting a Sunday school class on leading people to Christ, Amen. and it's a it's a adaptation of the Netcasters uh, curriculum, and he was taught that when he was in college, and so be in prayer for him as he starts that Sunday school series. If you don't come to Sunday school, that's another step. That's where we get engaged in a little bit different type of Bible study, line upon line, precept upon precept, and so that'll start this coming Sunday. And then in the evening, we have our Wild Horse Ministries, and that's going to be starting at 4 and going until 6, Lord willing, because I've heard that it's threatening to rain. Uh, but I told a man earlier on the phone, I said, you know, I, I know someone who was in a storm, and he said, peace be still, Amen. and it obeyed. And so... Um, Let's be in prayer that the rain would stay away for our ministry on Sunday and that we would see a number of folks from the community. I'm going to say this now, and I'll say it Sunday as well. If you come Sunday evening, I hope you're able, please engage people that you don't recognize because it's a tremendous opportunity for us to have an impact when the community comes to our house, if you know what I mean. It's the Lord's house, but... Um, when they are here, we want to engage them, to invite them, and uh, let's be um, cognizant of that. I still need help with traffic direction. I have uh, one person signed up for that, and then I still need help with counseling, and I have two people who have volunteered to do that. I'll have instructions on Sunday, and we're going to get together and go over some details for traffic direction if you sign up for that or if you'd like to help with directing traffic. And I probably need three, maybe four people. I have uh, one signed up right now. And that would really help with traffic. And then with the counseling, I'd like to probably have four or five at least. And so if you're able to counsel with someone, pray with them, um, go through the gospel plan. You'll have literature in your hand. We'll go through what you need to do. And by the way, if you ever are counseling someone and you don't know what to do next, say, hey, let's have a word of prayer, and then I'll take you to talk to the pastor. It's that easy. And so um, I'll, I'll announce that again on Sunday if you're able to help with that. And then we might need some folks to show up early on Sunday evening. Uh, it'll start at 4, but if you could show up at like 3 and just help with setup, chairs, or whatever, um, we'll, we'll announce that on Sunday again, just a few folks. And if, especially if you live close, then you wouldn't have to stay here all the time. Come early, bring a chair, and possibly an umbrella. All right? And uh, let's be praying that it'll be a good evening. One more announcement, and I'd like for you to be thinking about this. Next Sunday, we have Wild Horse Ministry. Next Monday, I'll be going to a pastor's fellowship over in um, Fort Myers. No, Inglewood. And so I'll be taking the church van. If you'd like to go to a pastor's fellowship and you've never been, we will probably leave here at like 9.30 or 10 o'clock. We'll get over there. You'll hear a lot of preaching, super exciting. Uh, for me, I enjoy it. And eat lunch there um, and then come home. We probably won't get home till later, 6 or 7.30 at night. But if you'd like to go, just let me know and you can come with us on Monday. Uh, you don't have to sign up. There's no fee or anything. Uh, but it'll be a blessing. All right, uh, let's go ahead and keep singing. 413, 413, stand up, stand up for Jesus. And I don't see how we can sing this without standing up. So let's stand as we sing all three verses. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. 
started. Um, continue to pray for, I see Brother Bob Berger's back with us tonight. Glad you're feeling better, brother. And uh, pray for his dear bride, Miss Jeannie. Um, she has some arthritis in her back and it's hard for her to to sit, and she just doesn't feel well, so pray for her if you would. Continue praying for Joyce Rice. Uh, they had an MRI last Friday and still have not received the results from that yet. The doctor's trying to decide if they want her back, her vertebra, to heal on its own, which means she has to wear a back brace anytime she's out of bed for the next six months, um, or if they're able to repair it which would be a much shorter recovery time. And so I had prayer with them today, um, but it's kind of frustrating for her. She's been through therapy, and now she's back home, and um, she's still in pain. So pray for Miss Joyce, if you will. I also pray for Gary Gordon and uh, his, his family. Um, he, he is getting better. We've been praying for him. He had back surgery, having trouble walking. He's able to get out and have walks now. And he's able to walk a little bit further and a little bit further. Still has difficulty breathing and uh, some COPD and some different problems. So pray for him. He's getting stronger, but he needs your prayers. And then um, continue to pray for Bruce Arrowwood. I was praying for him and any walk tonight. Good to see you, brother. Um, has pain in his, uh, in his legs, heel spurs, and then his, his knee. So pray for him. And... Um, Pray for my friend, Charlie Scott. He's the pastor. Uh, he was over at Maranatha. He's still there as a member now, um, but he served as interim. They've been treating him for cancer, and the cancer treatment caused his white blood cell count to go too low, um, and so he had to stop the treatment for a while. He went back to the doctor and told the doctor, he said, I don't think I want to resume the treatment. I believe God's healed me, and I think I'm fine. And so... He texted me that, trusting God for healing and for life, and he's going to go on because the, the treatment was too traumatic, and I think the treatment was hurting his health. So pray for Charlie Scott and his wife, Donna. Um, Charlie Scott. Pray for Betty Lou Carpenter having a, knee pr or having a procedure first thing in the morning tomorrow. Uh, pray for Melinda. Um, she, uh, she struggles with drowsiness, and... Um, 
She's fallen several times. Uh, I saw her a week or two ago, and her face was black, and she had bruising on her face. And just, it's a, it's a problem. So pray for Melinda, if you will. And uh, she, has, she has pain. She'd like it to make it here Sunday evening, but her and Rob need a ride. So pray for her looking for a ride and just uh, some difficulty with that situation. And then the caretaker that takes care of Melinda um, needs, needs some help. She's trying to get her license back, so pray for Shelly. Um, there's some funds that need to be raised, and so pray for Shelly if you would. And then I got some other prayer requests that were handed to me tonight, Brother Matt Castle. Continue to pray for Lorraine, and um, hopefully we'll see her soon. We pray for her. We miss you, Lorraine, praying for you. Pray for Roy York, um, a friend of the Castles. He has cancer. Robert Baker, who has blood clots in his lungs. Amy Castle. Um, they're praying for her salvation. And then I just got a text message just now. Uh, Richie Urbanowski um, was in an accident today. Don't know what kind, uh, but he, he's in, at the ER in uh, Highlands Regional. And so pray for Richie Urbanowski. Do we have any other prayer requests tonight to mention, modify, or praises? You can share those too. Any other prayer requests? Okay, several. Uh, our son Jason is showing some signs of improvement now with his ulcerative colitis. We're hoping that the, the new drug will take hold more for him, but he, is, he has more strength now. And thank the Lord for that. Praise the Lord. Yeah, we've had him on the list for a while. Kathy Freeland, she goes to a Baptist church north on 27 somewhere. Anyhow, we usually meet Sunday for lunch, and she didn't come, and we couldn't get a hold of her. Well, Monday morning, Jane went by to see her, and she ended up calling the police, and they come down there and had to get into her house, and she... Uh, was laying on the floor in front of the refrigerator and evidently had been there since Saturday morning. Her sugar count was like uh, 600. Her AHC was right at 22. So she just got out of intensive care today. But um, she needs a lot of prayer. And she can't go back to her home now, so she's got to find a nursing home to go to. And she doesn't really know. That's a hard place to be. Gandhi is her name? Kathy. Kathy. <clears throat> okay. Um, first, I wanted to thank you all for all your prayers. Um, first, for the loss of my husband and getting through all that, but also for my son, Eric. Um, he's still in the hospital, but they've changed his medication, and it looks like he's going to be able to come home on Friday. And so that's a real praise, and I just want to thank you all for prayers. Amen. Thank you, Teresa. Good to see you. Keep praying for Eric. That'll be a blessing if he gets to come home. Amen. Pray for Miss Patty. She's traveling. She's coming home this back home Saturday. I still request prayer for Bill Headley. He's still not quite up to par. Yeah, if you could just pray for my sister-in-law, Stacy Toller, just an unspoken prayer request. And then for our son, Dayton, who woke up at 3 o'clock this morning with 103 fever, and he's just been back and forth all day today with it. So Grandma's sitting with him till we get home. Um, I'll ask for prayers for our paperwork in... Uh, trying to get financial assistance in different places, and it's just taking a long time to hear back from them, and I just would like prayer for them to look at it and reply. 
Amen. The Turners are praying for their, uh, Monica's talking about financial assistance with medical bills and uh, just the process of that. Anyone in here has gone through that kind of thing. It just takes forever, so pray for them. Hi. <laughs> I have a praise. I just want to say I praise God every single day because he has given me a voice where I had no voice before, and I don't even, I can't even say how I feel because when I do what I've been doing with the backpacks, I have no set conversation that I ever say with anyone. And it just comes out, and it's all God. And I never thought in my whole entire life, because of my past, the way I was raised, that I would ever want to talk about that openly to anyone. And God has given me a voice now, and I am so grateful every day. Amen. That's powerful, Cindy. I see what's going on. God's good. God's good. That's not the only testimony like that I've heard lately. There's some revival going on. That's good, folks. Keep it up. All right. I think that's it, Dave. Thank you. Let's have a word of prayer over these. Would you bow with me? God, we thank you for this evening. Thank you so much for answering prayer. I thank you for the praises that we've heard tonight. Dear Lord, I do think of the different ones who are struggling with illness. Think of Bill. Well, think of uh, Roy with cancer. Robert with the blood clots and... um, Dear Lord, Richie, in the hospital tonight, I pray, God, that you'd be with him. Not sure the situation there, but Lord, I pray that you'd intervene. Lord, I pray that you would um, be with Joyce as she heals, be with Melinda, take care of her, Lord, with Betty Lou and those having doctor's appointments coming up. Lord, I pray that you'd be with Eric. Dear Lord, I think of what your word says. You've not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind. Minister to him. Take care of him. Restore him to health, Lord. Lord, I pray that you'd be with um, Jason. Thank you that the treatments are, appear to be doing better and helping him. God, I pray that you'd be with um, Dayton and Stacy. And dear Lord, I pray that you would... Uh, Be with the Turners as they're trying to work through this. Uh, God, we know that you're the God of all the earth. Um, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. I pray that you would provide for these needs. Uh, Move through the appropriate channels. Dear Lord, there's other needs here tonight. I think of some that are financial, some emotional. Dear Lord, I know that some are mourning the loss of loved ones. And I pray that you'd minister to their hearts, dear Lord. Those that are looking for direction and guidance, help us, dear Lord, to to follow your word. And God, I thank you for Cindy's testimony, as well as others that we've talked of lately. Um, You're doing a work in our hearts. It's evident. God, please continue. Whatever it takes to continue the revival work that you're doing here at Independent, God, I pray that you would just continue it. We'll praise you for it. Well, thank you for it. In your name I pray. Amen. I want to read to you a uh, prayer letter. And I was going through my emails. Um, I got a little bit behind in my email communication at the end of the year. And then uh, even this month. And uh, one of the reasons for that is I get so many emails every single day. I think I counted like over 50 emails yesterday. It was crazy. And that's just in one day. Yes, ma'am, Monica.
Landmark had their anniversary Sunday last week. That's why Lantana and Aiden were not here. And they had 145 salvation testimonies um, because of the outreach. Um, they do a lot of bus ministry, a lot of folks coming in, visiting. It's a big day in community involvement. And Lantana got to lead three people to the Lord, and Aiden got to lead two or three. I think three, yeah. So they were children, and that's, that's a blessing. Landmark Baptist Church and college. So thank you, Monica. That's a blessing to hear. I was talking about emails. I fell behind in my emails, and I found this one uh, from Doug Stamper. Doug and Donna Stamper are our missionaries to Kenya. And uh, he had emailed me. He'll be in the area, and he's going to be coming through February the 18th to give us an update. And so he's on a furlough. We're going to look forward to that. Uh, But this email is kind of neat. It caught my attention because he mentions a church that we visited while we were over there with him and one of the pastors. He says, Dear Brother Goodwin and Independent Baptist Church. And then he writes, A mission church, and crossed it out and wrote an organized church. And so this church has taken a step. We were able, by God's grace, to start a new work at Swanee as we helped David Musa to accomplish God's will in his life. The area of Swanee, it's crazy. It's full of uh, uh, pineapple fields. So you drive down these red dirt roads and you got pineapples on both sides as far as the eye can see. We began in a rented one-room house and met there for about two years. Then as God blessed, we rented a cafe that has closed and were able to meet in that building for about seven years. We've enjoyed the great opportunities that God has given us there in Swanee, but this was not God's ultimate purpose. Last year, we got the privilege to lease a piece of unused land, maybe to purchase it, less than a mile from the cafe, and erect a temporary building in the neighboring community of Greystone. We thank God for the opportunity now to be located on a main road and be more centrally located in the area where our members live. On the 20th of August, after more than 10 years, we were able to organize Greystone Bible Baptist Church with about 20 charter members. What a blessing to see God's hand on them and their church take this first step of obedience to God. So when we were there, this is not where it was at. It was in a different location. And it says, Pastor James from Kabati preached. Well, he put that in here. We visited the church at Kabati, Jennifer and I did. And in between services, he, Pastor James invited us back to his house and we ate some kind of wild yam and drank chai tea with them in his house for breakfast. I remember that one Sunday morning. He says, then I led the organizational service. We reminded the members of this now church to be faithful to the Bible, their constitution and the leading of the Holy Spirit and to support their church and their pastor faithfully. Thank you for your prayers, your support, and the opportunity you are giving Donna and I the, to, to help plant Bible Baptist Church of Greystone. And so I'll put this here at the back. Most of these are going to be um, given, I'm giving most of my communication to Miss Linda Kaleric, our uh, missions secretary. And so, but I had to read this to you. I was excited. It's kind of neat. Pastor James, I remember him. Take your Bibles, please, and turn with me to Psalm 19 tonight. We're going to finish up the psalm, Psalm 19. Last week, we breezed through the first part, made some observations about general revelation. Those are the things that you can learn about God from His creation. And you can learn some things about God. Romans 12 says we can learn about His power and His Godhead. So, He's real, there's a Godhead, and He's powerful. If He created this, He's greater than this. Uh, We would say that the fingerprints of the Creator are seen on His creation. Everywhere we look, we see intelligent design. Um, Now, there's an intelligent design movement, but it stops short of giving glory to God, okay? And so the intelligent design movement is like a halfway between evolution and theology, Uh, They don't want to admit that it's God. They just say, well, it looks like there's intelligent design there. No, God is the designer. Okay, you understand that. I understand that. So we preached through the first part of this, and we said that, yes, you can see things, and it gives glory to God everywhere, 
any place there's speech, sees the sky and sees the evidence of God. But then we were shown how that the Word of God is a different kind of revelation, revealing who God is and the things that God's Word does. Look at verse 7. The law of the Lord, that's the Word of God, is perfect. It's complete. It's perfect. It's preserved. It converts the soul. You can get saved by the Word of God. You cannot get saved by staring at the stars. You can learn some things. You can know that you need to search. But neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Jesus Christ. Amen? Now that puts a burden on us. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right. He always does right. He always speaks right. Rejoicing the heart. His laws are not burdensome. They bring rejoicing. The commandment of the Lord is pure. It's unmixed in its motives and its essence, enlightening the eyes. It gives us enlightenment. The fear of the Lord, that which we have when we learn of Him, is clean. It promotes clean living, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. And they're valuable. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey in the honeycomb. Now, we're going to be reading through the rest of the psalm this evening, um, but what we're going to see in these remaining verses, verse 10 through verse 14, is, is something significant. I don't want this to pass by you. Uh, Brother Dan and I were talking about this in Bible study on Monday night, and sometimes Christians, we miss this element of God's Word. Uh, I would say God's Word is powerful, and everyone here would agree, amen? Amen. You should, for the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. It's sharp because it doesn't just cut physical things. It pierces to the discerning of the soul and spirit and joints and marrow. It's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. It's quick and powerful. It's alive. Isaiah 55, 11 says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. It shall accomplish that whitherto I send it. It's capable of awakening faith. It's capable of changing lives. God's word is powerful. But, you knew that was coming. In order for God's word to do what it's supposed to do, you have to respond when you hear it. James chapter 1 says, but be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only. And, and when we come to this last part of the psalm, what we see is we see the response to God's word. We're told of the revelation in heaven. We're reminded of the value and the power that God's word has to us. But then the psalmist himself after expounding these truths to us, he begins to pray to the Lord. Look at verse 12. Who can understand his errors? In a sort of rhetorical question, he asks, and of course we don't answer it, only God can. Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Who's he talking to? Not you, God. He, he's been telling us these things in a, in a linear fashion, expounding them, and now he in a sense, responds to the very words of Scripture he's just written. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer." Our prayer and our response to God's Word ought to be recognizing its value, but then allowing God to motivate us to respond. There's three prayers here. Notice this is a, this is a response when the psalmist is... And, and by the way, I'm not, I believe that these are God's words written through human instruments. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 says, "...all Scripture is given by inspiration of God." Given by inspiration is one word in the original. It is theopneustos. It means it comes, 
Theos is God, and pneustos is like pneumonia or pneumatic. It's the breath of God through human instruments. For the word of God came not in old time by the will of man, Peter says, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. These are God's words through human authors. And I wonder, as David was writing this, I wonder if he recognized and then began to respond because he recognized what he was writing. If he recognized that they were God's words at that instant or later, I'm not sure. I'll wait. I'll ask him when I get to heaven. Maybe you've got some theories you can tell me. Regardless, though, he writes this, the law of the Lord is perfect. And having just looked at the skies, he says, it is so much better. It, it makes you wise. And it, he, he tells us what to do. It rejoices our heart. It enlightens the eyes. It's, it's righteous. It's, it's, it promotes cleanness. So it has value. Verse 10, how much value, David? Well, it's much more to be desired are they than gold. You know, gold, there's never been a time when gold wasn't worth something. It's always worth something. It has inherent value. By the way, did you know that's by design? God designed that, right? Back in the book of Genesis, before money ever existed, a universal currency of exchange, God said the gold of that land was good. God said the gold was good. He put the minerals in the earth to be mined by men, and some have inherent value designed by God. Gold is one of them. And yet, the psalmist here, knowing that gold is valuable, he says, the word of God is more desirable than gold, yea, than much fine gold. It's more valuable than riches. Notice what he says next. He says, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Now, in the psalmist days, you couldn't go down to the 7-Eleven and make yourself sick on so many sweets that are down there. The, the, the number of candy, different candy options are crazy. You just want a chocolate bar, and there's so many different options. That's why I like going to Aldi. There's like only one option of everything. I don't stand there mesmerized. I, I wanted ketchup, not 50 kinds of ketchup or you know, chocolate. There's so many different kinds. He didn't have that. The sweetest thing they had was a naturally occurring Sugar, honey, and the honeycomb, he says. Sweeter also are they than honey and the honeycomb. Its warnings ring true, saving us from sorrow and tragedy. Great reward in the keeping of it, obedience to God's word. Look at verse 11. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned. Now, sometimes you don't like a warning, but if you don't get the warning and you have an accident or a fall, you wish you were warned, right? And in the keeping of them, when you keep God's words, there is great reward. All at once we realize that though there is great value in God's word, the warnings, the commandments, everything, we are to keep it. But we also realize how far short we fall from His holy standard. When you really read the word of God, you recognize there's something different about this. This is holy. This is amazing. And yet I fall short. For all have sinned and come short of. The heavens declare the glory of God. You have fallen short. And you know what tells you that? This right here. The law is a mirror that shows us the character of God and shows us we've fallen short, Paul says in Romans chapter 7. And we realize our failures Isaiah chapter 6 puts it this way, it says, Then said I, Isaiah came face to face with God, and when he saw God for who he was, he recognized how far down Isaiah said, I am, because he says, Woe is me, I am undone, I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. How do you know that, Isaiah? Mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts, high and lifted up. The Word of God shows us God high and lifted up. And really, we ought to have a response in that. You ought to be, if you are never struck with wonder, if you never find yourself reading the Word of God and say, oh Lord, I'm a sinner. Please forgive me. Even as a believer, then maybe you need to slow down and read it again. So the psalmist here says he gives a prayer for God's examination and cleansing. Verse 12, who can understand his own errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. This is a rhetorical question. 
Who can understand his own errors? Which of us truly understands or knows his own faults? Isn't that the way it is? Often we're blind to our own faults. We see other people's faults very well. I can see yours. It's kind of like seeing your face. Understanding your own faults and seeing your own face, you need something to see your own face, don't you? You need a mirror. Don't you know that's what God's Word is? It's a mirror. See, I can't see my own face without a mirror. I can't see my own faults without the mirror of God's Word. A lot of times when I've counseled, and this is what they taught us when they were teaching us some counseling principles in college, they said, people will come for counseling and they know their symptoms, but they don't know their problem. And it's your job with the Word of God to help find the problem. The symptoms just kind of guide you there because a lot of times people say, when you go to the doctor, don't you say that? Well, I got a runny nose and my eye hurts or this hurts. And the doctor says, oh, you've got this sickness. So you know the symptoms. He finds the problem. This word right here is to show us the problem. Much of our life is this way. There's so much about our lives that we only think we understand. Uh, Proverbs chapter 20 says, man's goings are of the Lord. How then can a man understand his own way? We think we understand we really don't. Proverbs 16.25 says, There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. I love this one. Uh, the Bible says, uh, Every way of man is right in his own eyes. You talk to people, they have opinions. And their opinions are right. You know, you know, it doesn't matter if the person is a professional or extremely poor. They have opinions on politics and economics. And they're right. Right? Just ask them. And everything else, religion, the guy's never darkened the door of a church one day in his life and he knows how churches should run and he knows more than the Apostle Paul. Every way of man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord pondereth the hearts. And see, the scripture says in Jeremiah 17, 9, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? You know that next verse in Jeremiah 17, 10 says, I, the Lord, search the hearts. God knows. And so what am I to do, pastor, if I don't know what my, my problems are, my secret faults? How, how can I understand my own errors? Well, I believe when you ask God to reveal them, He will. And by the way, the psalmist doesn't just say, help me to understand my errors. He says, cleanse me from my errors. Cleanse thou me. If your heart is going to be cleansed from sin, it's God who's going to do it. Uh, there's, no, there's no way that you can you know, work hard enough to work things out of your life. I love what Galatians chapter 5 does when it talks about the problems in our life. And then it reminds us that when we work in the flesh, we produce the fruit of the flesh. And the works of the flesh, if you want to read in Galatians chapter 5, they're not good things. When you try to produce righteousness in your own life, void of the Word of God and the Holy Spirit, you're just going to produce self-righteousness, you're going to produce judgmentalness, you become a Pharisee. But if you allow the Holy Spirit to do it and the Word of God to do it, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, contentment, gentleness, goodness, faith, temperance, and the list goes on. Against such there is no law. See, if I'm going to have cleansing in my life, God's going to have to do it. I think of what the Bible says in 1 John 1, 9. The psalmist here says, who can understand his own errors? God, please cleanse me from my secret faults. Those things that, now what does it mean when it says secret faults? There's two ways of looking at that. Uh, Some could say that it's sins that other people don't know about. Lord, help me to solve this problem before it becomes public and ruins my reputation. That's possible. Um, The scripture says in Numbers 32, If you will not do so, behold, you have sinned against the Lord. Be sure your sin will find you out. You do understand that sin, willful sin, is planting seeds. And be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. There are those who have secret sins. And nobody knows about it. And and they know about it. And and they don't want to get over it or want want to get rid of it. Don't want to be cleansed. Guess what? It won't be secret forever. So the psalmist is saying here, Lord, I want these sins taken care of. Now, that could be the case. It could also be the case that he says, Lord, I'm not even sure where I still have problems. Do you know, there's an idea, and i got to be careful how I say this because I don't want to offend people or make you think the wrong thing. 
It's very possible that you grew up with a certain culture, with a certain attitude, with a certain temperament, and a certain family, and you became used to things and comfortable with things, and when you got saved, you didn't immediately know 100% of what you should or should not be doing. And the closer you grow to God, the more Christ-like you become, God systematically singles out the next thing in line. You guys do understand that holiness and sanctification is not a once and done issue. It is a lifelong, a lifelong travel and journey. And when you get the thing taken care of that you're working on right now, God's going to point out something else. I think it's possible that the psalmist is saying, Lord, I, I, I may have sins I don't even know about. Please single those out. Those secret sins that I'm not even aware of. You know, sin can be deceitful. It's possible for us to justify things, to rationalize things, and, and, and forget. And if we, if we grieve the Holy Spirit of God that is in us, you can do that. That's why the Word of God tells us not to in Ephesians chapter 4. Not, grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. But if we'll let Him... God's Word is quick and powerful. This is where I was quoting out of earlier. The Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, joints and marrow. What does it do? Well, it's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. I think sometimes we as believers ought to lay bare some of the areas of our life where we say, I'm not sure if this is questionable or not. Lord, can you just reveal it to me? If you do that and you're in the Word of God, you know what? He will. God, I know I'm flawed. I need your help. Seeing my sins, clear me. Search me with your spirit and your word. Point out my errors. Lead me in truth. Psalm 139, 23 and 24. I love the way it ends. That's the psalm that talks about the omniscience of God. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. Lord, you do it. Other people will say, oh, well, you're not my judge. You don't know my heart. Okay, God does. Lay it bare to him. All right? See if there be any wicked way in me. Again, it's a confirmation. The psalmist is saying, Lord, if there's a wicked way, I want to know where it's at. And lead me in the way everlasting. A prayer for cleansing. The second one is a prayer for God's guarding against the snare of direct disobedience. Verse 13, he says, Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Keep back thy servant from presumptuous sins. What is a presumptuous sin? Well, I would say a presumptuous sin is a sin that presumes on God. It's not very profound, I know. Um, Here's an illustration of presuming. Um, Let's say, for instance, I have hospitality at my home, and I say, you know what? Um, Brother, you're, you're welcome to come to my home anytime. Pastor, you can come to my home anytime. And he says, oh, that's great. That's an open invitation. If he called me up on the phone and he says, he says, Brother Goodwin, I'd like to come over and pay you a visit tomorrow at, say, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Okay, that's good. That's not presuming on my hospitality. Presuming on my hospitality would be if he showed up this evening at 12 a.m. and said, you said I could come at any time. And I said, all right, what do you need? And I let him inside. He's, he's my friend. He'll let me in for a cup of coffee. I'd say, yeah, I'll let you in, but you better have a good reason right? That's presuming. And the presumptuous sin is one committed in full knowledge of God's commandment, but with an attitude that God's going to forgive me and give me grace anyway. That's wicked. Do you understand that's wicked? You're mocking God. That's going to hurt you. See, there's freedom in righteousness. He said, he said, keep me back from presumptuous sins. Don't let them have dominion over me. Do you realize that Christians who do wrong, knowing that it's wrong, it tends to become, in fact, many addictions are this way. And they have dominion over the individual. Let them not have dominion over me. Do you understand that people who struggle with addictions, and I don't know if some of you understand this. You probably do. If you've ever struggled with an addiction, you do understand it. Christians can get saved and still struggle with an addiction, okay? That might be hard for you to hear. There are some people, they get saved, and boom, it's gone. There are some who don't. And they get saved, and they have that struggle for the rest of their life. And it's not a good thing. And God can break those chains. There is freedom in Jesus Christ. 
But oftentimes, it doesn't come until the pain is bad enough. Sometimes it's got to be really bad before it'll finally break free. That's why Paul the Apostle prayed for that young man to be turned over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. Sometimes this flesh has to be destroyed before the individual let go of those sins. And so we need to understand that not everyone's sanctification journey is the same way. Are we on board? Okay. And if somebody gives in to a presumptuous sin, it can have dominion over them, even over a believer. If you allow it to, Romans chapter 6 warns us against this. Should we continue in sin that grace may abound? How's it go, church? God forbid. forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Now, Paul is not saying that it's not possible. He's telling you that it should not happen. It's not God's will. In fact, he goes on later in chapter 6 telling you, Know ye not to whom ye yield your servants to obey? His servants you are to whom you obey, whether to sin unto death. Or to righteousness. See, Romans chapter 6, verse 23 is written to believers. And Christian, if somebody sins presumptuously, it will have dominion in their life. They will bring death and consequences into their life. Jesus said, I'm come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. It's possible to have salvation in Jesus Christ and be walking around in the wages of your own, of your own sin and have a miserable life, cut short even. You will reap sin's wages. The wages of sin is still death for a believer. Not in eternity, but in this life. It'll wreck their life. This passage is to believers. And so he says, I understand the nature. It is a snare. And I want freedom. Verse 13. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright and shall be innocent from great transgression. When God gives freedom, He gives real freedom. And Jesus said... If I make you free, when the Son shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. So the psalmist here prays for God's guarding against the snare of direct disobedience. By the way, what's the best way, pastor, to get free of presumptuous sins? Don't do them to start with. Yeah. What's the best way to get free from an addiction? Don't start it. Don't play around with it. We, we tell our children that, right? Right? And then finally, a prayer of offering and of worship. Verse 14, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Now, this is kind of a different uh, direction. So uh, the psalmist before, he said, Lord, take care of these secret sins. I don't even understand them or they're still small. I don't want them to get bigger. He said, Lord, help me in the area of presumptuous sins. I don't want them to have dominion. And here he's, he's departing from evil, and now he's doing good. Let the words of my mouth, Lord, help me with my worship, not just abstaining from evil, but doing good, not just to avoid displeasing God, but to actively please him. Do you understand that the Christian life is not just about all the things you can't do? It's about living for the Lord, the things that you should do. Uh, many times in the Word of God, uh, the writer, the Apostle Paul, he wrote, Free, flee youthful lusts, but follow after. Depart from evil, do good. If any man be in a Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. All things are become new. Let the words of my mouth, the things that we say, the meditations of my heart, my heart, the inner man, the things we say and the things we think, be acceptable in thy sight. I love what Proverbs says, the eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding the evil and the good. Do you realize that everything you say and think is before the eyes of the Lord? God sees everything, and having spoken of secret sins and presumptuous sins, David here speaks of the contents of his mouth and his mind, and he says, God, I want them to be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Do you realize your mouth and your heart will influence your life? What you say and what you think will eventually influence what you do. And what you say and what you think are as important to God as what you do, because they are part of what you do. And we ought to care. Proverbs chapter 29 puts it this way. It says, Seest thou a man hasty in his words? There's more hope of a fool than of him. Be careful with your words. 
God sees every thought we have. He hears every word we utter. And it doesn't matter if it's behind someone's back, if it's on Facebook, if it's online or wherever. You can't say something behind God's back. (laughs) God hears. Oh, Lord, my strength. Listen, if you're going to live the kind of life, if you're going to have the response to God's word that you need to have, and and have a life that is purified from sin, it's only going to be by God's strength. My strength and my Redeemer. I owe this to Him. By the way, I I love verse 14. It's one of those psalms. uh, I find it helpful to start the day with Psalm 1914. As you start the day, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart. How many of you guys woke up in the morning have ever woke up in the morning and had a conversation, the first conversation of the day, and you said something you wish you would not have said. I did that. I had to apologize to a guy today, and he said there was nothing, but it bothered my heart because I realized, I said, I did not come across Christ-like. I was trying to be funny. Sometimes humor gets us in trouble, and I had to apologize, and I thought, Lord, let the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. The words we say can be acceptable in our sight or in societies, but really he matters most. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. We will become more like God as we spend more time with God, with the people of God, and submitted to the word of God. But you will become more like the world the more time you spend separated from the people of God, not spending time with God or in the Word of God. So friend, here's a challenge. Let's be in this Word. It'll continue to change you for the rest of the year. There's no finish line on this side of heaven. You guys do understand. Pastor, I've been saved 50 years. Praise God for that. I know some of you have. But you understand there's not a finish line this side of heaven because the finish line is Jesus Christ and none of us are there yet. So let's push on. Let's grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we do that by taking in this word and by responding to it on a daily basis. Let's go ahead and bow our heads, close our eyes, repeat into your heart, maybe something specific. Talk to the Lord. Let him help you take care of it tonight. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for your word. I pray that you would help us to live for you. I thank you for the Psalms, for this one in particular. It's a favorite of mine. God, I pray that you would help it not just to be a favorite Psalm, but to help me live by it. And each one here, we thank you for this. In your name I pray, amen. Would you stand to your feet, heads bowed and eyes closed? If God has spoken to your heart tonight, friend, do business with God. Brother Jerry Peterson, would you close us in a word of prayer, after which we'll be dismissed? Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for sending your Son to die on the cross that we might have eternal life. And Jesus, we thank you for being obedient and going through all the punishment before the cross. And then as you laid yourself on it down on the cross, you shed all of your blood that we might have eternal life. And then you carried the sin of the whole world on your shoulders, so much so that God had to let you go into the center of the earth. And then on the third day, like you said, 
you rose victorious from the grave. And Jesus, the, um, uh, the one that we generally say is, is the one that we pray about, but it's the same Jesus and they come together so that they have life and he has a body. So the body come to re reunite with the soul and he taught the um, uh, disciples and the friends and the relatives and he encouraged them just like he encourages us right now. He encourages that uh, he was sending them out into the world. And after 40 days of speaking to them, they went out and they spread the gospel message and we know that he did a, they did a good job because we still have the message tonight and our pastor preaches it. But Lord, thank you so much for figuring all those things out and we don't really understand don't understand eternity, and we don't understand how you operate, but we accept you by faith. Lord, I pray that you help us to go out and, and uh, pretend that we were in that meeting when Jesus sent it out, and that we take our tracks. We got plenty of tracks back here that we would talk to people about the Lord, and, and it's really fun and it's easy. And um, I'm not always obedient to it, but I like to do it. And uh, Lord, I just pray that each one of us will tell somebody about Jesus, even this week. We thank you for our preacher. We thank you for everything that he does and his, his wife and his children, and they're all so dear. And we just thank you for them. And I pray that you would go with us now as we go our several ways. And, Help us, Lord, to take a stand for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.